Hello, Bofiles! Today we're talking about the Furling Etude number 11, which is the slow etude in D minor. It contrasts really dark phrases in D minor with very bright and sunny phrases in both F major and A major. The interesting thing about this etude is that there's a tempo change in the middle of it. There's a nice kind of flow about it, and you want to make sure that you're being very expressive with where you place these rhythms, and don't be afraid to stretch and compress to show the expression. Uh, I feel like I always go overboard, so make sure that you're being tempered. I always have to remind myself that sometimes less is more. So just be careful with that. And I'm not sure how the recording turned out, but I have a feeling that I did that kind of thing. The other issue with this etude is of course just getting the low notes to work. Hey, don't you have a video about how to make the low notes easier on the oboe? That's right, I do have a video on how to get the low notes to work, and I'll link to that in the description and in the box above. Oh, I almost forgot. I also have a giveaway that we're planning for when I get to 2,000 subscribers, so don't forget to subscribe and share this with all your old friends, and you know, practice your furling etudes. The other issue with this etude is trilling, right? We want to be able to be organized with the trills and stay in the flow of the etude, not have like suddenly very aggressive technique. So the way I practice that, and I haven't really talked about this in the other trill videos that I've done, and if you need helps with just basic finger technique and trilling, I'll link that in the description. But this is a method to make the trills flow a little better in legato passages. And that is to separate them into slow motion. So the first one is at the beginning of the F major phrase, uh, right on the downbeat. But I want to be able to practice it. So I'll break it down. So I'm just doing two trills and a notch log and I'll practice it like this. And I'll keep this really slow tempo with the other eighth notes. You can even slow it down further to make sure you're being really smooth with all of your finger motions and your breath is connecting all the notes together. And then when you speed it up, it really flows together fluidly. The other trill is gonna feel more stressful because it's in the middle of a stringendo and it goes into the a tempo section. So if you don't know what stringendo means, go ahead and look it up and I'll give you just a second. that stringendo means to push forward and create a sense of like moving and agitation even. So I always think about like, okay, I need to create the feeling that we're just extra passionate right there. So I wanna almost a chill without like kind of pushing the tempo forward too much. And I use the trill to really mark the a tempo of the next section. I'll hold onto the C so I can cascade downward that F major arpeggio. feeling of relief at the end of that stringendo. Finally, you want to make sure they're using a vibrato that is very expressive and connecting throughout the etude. And again, if you need help with a vibrato, I've got another video on how to talk about that down below. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to like them so that the YouTube algorithm blesses it with dispersing it to more people, and subscribe below. And as always, when in doubt, play beautifully.